Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the A segment of episode 57 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Breakup. We begin this segment with number four playing with a soccer ball in his living room, but he ends up accidentally breaking a vase with a koala on it, which angers his mother, who points out that she's told him countless times not to play ball in the house. Fortunately, Mrs. Beatles has a replacement vase, and she places it where the previous one was. We soon find out that Mrs. Beatles actually has multiple replacement vases. We see this throughout a montage of scenes which show number four accidentally breaking the replacement vases uh, by playing different activities. Not just indoors, there are a few scenes where number four is out in the yard and he still ends up accidentally breaking some of the replacement vases. The montage ends when Mrs. Beatles catches a fire arrow that almost hits the last replacement vase, and she warns number four that nothing is to happen to the last replacement vase, or else she will send number four to ballroom dancing school. Mrs. Beatles then tells number four that she's going to go get some kangaroo milk for Joey, and she once again warns number four that nothing is to happen to the last replacement vase. After Mrs. Beatles and Joey leave, number four wonders to himself what can he do that's fun but won't cause any potential uh, destruction to the last replacement vase. For whatever reason, number four decides to set up a bike course in his living room. So number four begins to ride a bike through this bike course, but number four ends up falling off the bike and the bike is heading straight for the replacement vase, uh, much to number four's horror. We soon see though that the bike actually doesn't hit the vase, but that's because the vase is not where it's supposed to be and number four quickly tries to figure out what happened to the vase. We then see, or yes, number four looks over by the window and he sees that a boy has snuck into the Beatles' home and taken the vase. Uh, the boy then escapes through the window and number four chases after the boy, demanding that he return the vase. We soon see that the boy is heading towards a stadium. The boy runs past a, yes, the run, the boy runs past a line of kids that are all holding uh, fragile objects, and the boy presents the vase to a kid who's acting like a security guard. The kid lets, yes, the security guard kid lets the boy enter the uh, stadium. Number four, on the other hand, just charges through the line of kids and runs past the security guard kid to enter the stadium. The security guard kid is yelling at number four that uh, only kids that have brought fragile objects can enter the stadium, but number four pays the security guard kid no mind as he charges through the stadium, hoping to find the boy that stole uh, his mom's vase. Eventually, number four reaches the interior of the stadium, and he sees that a variation of baseball is occurring right now. This version of baseball has batters hitting fragile objects rather than baseballs. And we see, uh, we see two kid commentators, Nick and Chip, uh, talking about this variation of baseball. They're calling it baseball. Number four likes what he sees of the baseball game so far, and he wants to participate. Meanwhile, in the commentator box, we see Ernest from Operation Matador enter the commentator box, and Nick and Chip are interviewing Ernest. Essentially, they're questioning him about if he uh, thought that baseball would end up being successful, and Ernest answers yes, because he believes that kids like to break fragile objects, and he demonstrates by breaking Chip's glasses. 
Um, afterwards, or yes, after this brief interview, we see that number four is now wearing a baseball uniform that happens to have his codename slash designated number um, on uh, the uniform. Uh, Nick and Chip don't uh, don't recognize number four, so they just decide to call him by uh, the number that's on the uniform. And number four does manage to successfully hit a porcelain puppy and uh, break it when it hits some of the stadium lights. Uh, the pitcher then pulls out uh, Mrs. Beetle's vase, and number four realizes that, uh, yeah, he can't break the vase or else he'll be in trouble. So when the pitcher throws uh, Mrs. Beetle's vase, uh, number four actually just grabs the vase and he starts to make a run for it uh, into one of the in one of the um, uh, interior parts of the stadium, uh, the parts that are not the center of the stadium but uh, the uh, indoor parts of the stadium. And uh, the other baseball players begin to chase after number four while Nick and Chip are commenting about number four um, taking the vase and just running off with it. While he's in the indoor part of the stadium, uh, number four happens to go by uh, a souvenir hallway and ends up breaking a lot of fragile objects while trying to run away from the baseball players. And... Uh, and um, yes, uh, he almost hits a mirror, but he's able to turn uh, turn one direction at the last second. But the baseball players are not so fortunate, and they end up uh, hitting the mirror. Number four ends up hiding in an office, and um, he ends up having to hide. Yes, has, he has to hide more thoroughly because Ernest and some of his bully comrades are entering the office. Um, Ernest is talking to his fellow bullies and he's explaining to them that there is a um, there is an ulterior motive for um, this baseball game. Uh, what happened is yes, Ernest and the bullies um, have set up baseball so that all of the uh, kids would bring uh, these fragile objects uh, to the game so that they would be broken. And Ernest reveals to his fellow bullies, that um, that uh, he set up a message uh, for all the parents uh, in the neighborhood, or at least the parents of the kids who um, and who entered the stadium, whether they're actually playing baseball or they brought uh, fragile objects for the baseball game. So this message is uh, going to um, yes, Ernest is going to use this message in order to uh, rat out the kids that either brought fragile objects to the baseball game or the kids that actually participated in the baseball game. And the intention for this is to ground all of these kids so that no one will stop Ernest and his fellow bullies from, uh, from uh, pulling some pranks throughout the neighborhood. The whole, um, the whole egging houses and throwing toilet paper all over yards and houses, um, that's uh, what they're planning to do. Number four is listening in on this uh, plan, but number four accidentally, um, um, yes, number four has his hand on a container full of fragile objects and he accidentally pushes it and breaks the fragile objects. And so Ernest and his fellow bullies know that number four is now in the office. Ernest, though, is actually not too angry at seeing number four, but that's only because Ernest... Um, that's only because Ernest was hoping to cross paths with number four uh, again because he wants revenge against number four for stopping his previous plan regarding the bully fights or bully matches from Operation Matador. So number four leaves the office. Yes, number four leaves the office while Ernest and his fellow bullies are chasing after him. But eventually, um, Number four reaches a hallway where at the other end of the hallway are the baseball players and they see number four, so they're charging after him. So on one end is uh, the baseball players, on the other end of the hallway is uh, Ernest's fellow bullies. Luckily for number four though, there happens to be an elevator in the middle of this hallway. So number four enters the elevator and he heads up to uh, a different floor of the stadium and the baseball players and the bullies end up running into each other trying to get to number four. 
Number four finds himself in, I believe you could call it a storage room. Yes, uh, it looks like a storage room full of fragile objects. Unfortunately for number four, though, Ernest arrives in the elevator and he has two baseball bats with him preparing to uh, attack number four. In a different elevator, or yes, a different elevator door opens up and we see Nick and Chip uh, deciding to comment about the, uh, about the fight that's about to go down. And they're apparently commenting this to everyone in the stadium um, with a, um, a scoreboard of some kind. Or, yeah, maybe not necessarily a scoreboard, but maybe like a verse board, a versus board between number four and Ernest. So number four and Ernest uh, begin a fight in the storage room. Number four tries to use some of the fragile objects. Or yes, first number four sets his mom's vase down and then he uses different fragile objects to try and distract Ernest who keeps breaking them with the baseball bats. Though eventually number four uh, finds a baseball bat in an emergency box and he tries to fight back uh, with this baseball bat against Ernest's two baseball bats. So the fight goes on for a little while, but eventually number four manages to um, number four manages to uh, get a fragile object onto Ernest's head so Ernest can't see where he's going and um, and a shelf ends up falling on top of Ernest, knocking him out. Number four also happens to be where the vase, or the shelf, yes. Uh, number four also happens to be in range of when the shelf falls over, but number four pops out uh, without any, um, yeah, number four happened to be at a part of the shelf where he could uh, get out of it unharmed. And number four reclaims his mother's vase, which is still safe and sound. And um, Nick and Chip praise number four for defeating the commissioner of baseball, and they question him about... Um, how it feels to win, but number four says that um, that it isn't over yet. He has to stop the um, he has to stop the recorded message that Ernest had made to rat out the kids that either watched or participated in the baseball game. Ernest mentioned earlier that the message would uh, would be released at five p at five o'clock. Unfortunately, though, while number four is explaining what he has to do. It's five o'clock now, and uh, Ernest's message uh, gets out. So the next scene shows, we do see Nick and Chip are commenting, but they're commenting from the windows of their homes. Oh, and we, we do see Ernest looking out one of the windows of his home too. And Nick and Chip are commenting that uh, all the kids that either watched or, or uh, participated in the baseball game, except for number four, ended up being grounded. Um, so yes, number four is the only one who didn't get grounded, uh, who participated in the baseball game. And, um, and yes, Nick and Chip are commenting about how number four, uh, is seen in different ways by some people. Some think of him like a hero, others think of him as the kid that, uh, got them all in trouble, uh, because he broke things during, uh, the baseball, uh, game. But they did say that kids are going to remember him for breaking stuff, that's for sure. So back at the Beatles' home, number four brings uh, his mom's vase back into the living room and places it where the vase and the previous vases went. When the screen goes dark, however, we hear the vase breaking and we hear Mrs. Beatles shouting at number four. And that's how we end this segment. So this segment... Uh, brings us another example of Codename Kids Next Door's usual tendency of taking a mundane situation and bringing it to a more over-the-top manner. Um, in this case, um, we have um, uh, breaking fragile objects, but this is taken to becoming a sport uh, in a variation of baseball known as uh, baseball. And number four happened to be the spotlight character for this particular segment, and I can understand why they chose number four. And interestingly enough, number four is the only Sector V operative who appeared in this segment, and I find that interesting because the sibling segment for this segment also only features one Sector V operative, not number four, but a different Sector V operative. So. Uh, when you combine both segments of episode 57, 
there are three Sector V operatives that don't appear at all in uh, episode 57, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, but yes, uh, let's um, get back to the focus for this particular segment. So, like I said, number four is the spotlight character. We do get to see Joey briefly, and we do get to see Mrs. Beatles, and we see that Mrs. Beatles has uh, a vase with a koala on it. Well, she had multiple vases, but number four ended up accidentally breaking on most of them. And, um, oh, I might as well mention this. Uh, Mrs. Beatles' face is shown briefly in this segment, but uh, during the brief time we do see her face, uh, her face is in um, angry mode. Um, yes, uh, her face doesn't look uh, the way her face would normally look. Uh, uh, her face has a look um, sort of like that look you would see on some characters in cartoons when they're angry. Um, that, that's how uh, Mrs. Beetle's face looks like in this segment when we see it. And understandably so, this happened because number four kept breaking uh, the vases. Now, to be fair, number four wasn't trying to be malicious, but at the same time, you kind of question why would number four keep, uh, keep doing activities uh, that would cause the uh, vases to accidentally break or could potentially break the vases. Some fans did feel that this segment highlighted number four being exaggerated into the dumb muscle of Sector V, um, particularly because number four thought it was a good idea to uh, set up a bike course in the living room after his mother just warned him, uh, don't do anything that could break the vase. Uh, but otherwise, um, yes, um, so, oh, that's right, there were some cameos. Um, yes, in the line of kids with fragile objects to enter the stadium, uh, Willard Wallace was one of the kids in the, uh, in the line, and Egbert Eggleston also was in the line. He's the kid who ended up becoming the fourth grade class president after James Nixon McGarfield, a.k.a. Jimmy, was defeated. And that's right, yes, Nick and Chip are characters that appear in this segment. One of the commentators actually did appear in Caked 4. The other one appeared in this segment first. Now, I should mention this. Um, uh, in the recap and thoughts video for Operation Caked 4, I said Chip was the uh, name of the commentator who appeared, but I was actually mistaken. Uh, Nick was the name of the commentator who appeared in Operation Caked 4. Chip was for the name of the uh, commentator who appeared in this segment. Uh, the source that I was checking to verify which name for the commentator, because again, Nick's name wasn't said during the course of Operation Caked 4, and um, ever since season four, the credits don't actually list the characters uh, in the voice cast section. So uh, I went to another source to verify uh, which commentator appeared in the segment, but the source said Chip instead of Nick. So that's why that mistake happened. And I figured I might, I might as well mention it. I mean, it, but it goes to show that we all do make mistakes. So... Again, that's just to clarify, that was a mistake. Nick was the one who appeared in Operation Caked 4. Chip appears in this segment. And uh, uh, as far as other characters go that appear in this segment, um, uh, Ernest appears. Yes, Ernest makes his return in this segment. He was a Season 4 character, too, from Operation Matador, which was actually brought up in this segment. And I did mention before, but... Ernest could be considered one of number four's arch enemies. Uh, the Toilinator could also be considered number four's arch enemy, uh, but um, yeah, the although uh, the Toilinator's uh, arch enemy status could be seen one-sided on the Toilinator's part, Ernest seems to have more of a uh, personal animosity towards number four, or I should say number four uh, seems to return the feelings of animosity towards Ernest. And in both his his appearances as the focus villain, Ernest is the um, Ernest uh, is uh, the enemy to number four in both of his appearances. I don't think Ernest appears again in this series, or at least uh, he might have some cameos here or there. I'll have to check again when I uh, uh, refresh my mind watching the later entries. But yes, Ernest returns, and he seems to once again establish himself as. Uh, one of number four's arch enemies. 
So otherwise, yes, I would say that's about it. Um, I thought this was, um, yeah, this seemed like an appropriate number four spotlight appearance. Um, I, I thought it was pretty clever how they decided to take a baseball game, but then they uh, in, they tied it into uh, the idea of kids liking to break fragile objects or, um, or that uh, mentality. I mean, obviously not all kids break fragile objects, uh, but yeah, that idea behind it and they tied it into a baseball game. Uh, we got to meet the um, one of the kid commentators and Nick and Chip go on to appear in some later entries in the series. Um, we got some cameos here or there and like I said, we got another appearance for a character who could be considered one of number four's arch enemies. But otherwise, yes, I believe that's about it now. So as of this video, we've now discussed the A segment of episode 57 of Codename Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care and until next time.